Go where your best prayers take you and clench the fists of your spirit and take it easy. Breathe deeply of the glad air and live one day at a time. Know that you are precious and learn to trust. Amen. Well, good morning. It's good to see all of you on this cold, well, it's not that cold, but it's kind of bleak out there, isn't it? Rugged morning. It's a lot warmer and drier in here, and thankfully, with all that work out there, um, we are dry, actually. We'll be kind of peeling things back to let them dry more, but that's a good thought. I hope that you are still enjoying some of the fun and glow of the holidays. I really mean that. Boy, we go to a lot of energy in Christmas time and the first of the year. Hope you don't turn that loose too easily. I'm surely not trying to. I'm still trying to hold on to a bit of it. I do think it's natural that when we get right here at the first of the year, all of us want a bit of a fresh start. That's just part of society. It's part of being human. But I've been asking myself, how do you start a fresh start, even in the beginning of a new year? Well, you and I know the answer. You can't start fresh if you don't know where you are. Because if you don't know where you are, you won't know where to go. What is interesting to me as I've thought about this the, the last couple of weeks is that so often, very often, we see where we are through the eyes of another person. Someone around us shows us where we are. And I had this experience recently. A few weeks ago, right after Christmas, my granddaughter Andy turned three. I call her baby girl. I know she hates that, and we'll hate that later. But Lois and I were going to take her out to dinner for her birthday, and my smart daughter-in-law, Tiffany, said, you know, you ought to take her somewhere that she knows that she likes to eat and will have fun. And I thought, that's the answer. And so we did. We took her to the Wasabi Japanese Steakhouse on Bearden Hill. <laughs> See, you've been there. And if you've been there, you know it is fun. I am not kidding. There's lots of noise and fanfare and banging and clanging and knives flying through the air and lots of fire, lots of fire. Because you sit right tableside and he's cooking, the chef is cooking right in front of you. And I've got to tell you, Andy's eyes lit up when that chef took that onion, chopped it up, restacked it and made a little volcano, put the oil in it and fired that thing up. Her eyes just got huge. It was like, whoa, this is cool. And then he did the next trip. He got his spatula out, and he got all those eggs, and he started tossing them in the air. You remember, he's tossing three or four at a time. And then they start disappearing in the top of his chef's hat. And she, her mouth is this big O like, where are those going? And then the best part of all, he's cooking the food, and all of a sudden he's making those little pellets of rice, and he starts shooting them around the table. And you have to catch them in your mouth. Now, what kid does not like food being thrown? Come on. And I've got to tell you, her face was pure delight. Everything so small, but she caught the fun and the wonder of every bit of it. And because she did, I did. And because she did, our family did. And that's when it hit me. I was almost transported from that place to somewhere else for a few minutes. Because I realized that that's the way to start a birth year. That's the way to start a new year. It's not by making those lists, what I need to improve, all the things I've done wrong, get down on my knees, crawl around, cry, moan, all that kind of stuff, tear my clothes. It is to start with joy and wonder at what is really around us. To start there and not miss it. Do you? Is that where you start? Because for most of you, I won't believe you. Because I don't start there either. See, this morning, believe it or not, we do start there with this lesson. And I know, I know, people are telling me, John, you're kind of cranked up today. I just got to tell you, I've had a little infection, so I'm on steroids, so y'all be careful. <laughs> I'm not sharing, by the way, because I'm way better. I need Dr. Holt back there. I'm not sharing. I'm keeping mine. Listen to the lesson that we start with today, because this is really our first Sunday of the year. You're aware of that. Last Sunday, we do what we always do. We did the wise men. It's great fun. We sing the songs. We're still in Christmas. Now we're in the new year. Every year, we start with what story? 
the baptism of Jesus. The church has done this for 2,000 years, over and over again. The story of Jesus' baptism. And John is telling us through the lens of this scripture. Listen to what he says. The baptism he gives Jesus, the baptism Jesus gives you and me, gives us all, is a baptism of spirit and fire. Spirit and fire. Listen to the words. You see, this is not to be an ordinary event. And we make it ordinary. Let's be honest. We dress it down. We drop it down. We come in here and sit and kind of start pondering. It's not a social status stepping stone. It is totally uncontrollable, John says. Totally uncontrollable. You're not in charge, in other words. And I don't know about you, but I know about me that I tend to do every bit of the same thing again and again. I'll take a lesson like this, a story like this, a beginning like this, and I'll make it an intellectual enterprise, and so do you. Flat out. We think and discuss and rationalize and theologize and analyze what this means. And I sat down this week and last week, and I was looking at all the things we write about baptism, and it put me to sleep. (laughs) What are we doing? We focus on if baptism is done properly. We focus on, is it the right person? Is it the right method? How much water do you use? What method of the water is dispensed? Who cares? (laughs) Seriously, have you ever thought about that? What are we doing? Well, maybe there's a place for that. I'm not so sure. You see, John wants us to get something else. You have the Spirit. You have fire in you. And most of us, we need it want it, and wonder a whole lot about it. You see, baptism is the landscape of wonder and joy and awe and mystery. That's what baptism is. It's not an intellectual enterprise. It's the intersection of God with you right now and every day. Right now and every day, God is intersecting you. And if you don't believe that, I'm okay about that because half the time I wonder about that too. But that's what the book says. That's what we did when we put water on you and me, and we will next week, and do it again and again and again this year. The intersection where God knows you. The intersection where God claims you. You. You, Karen. You, Jason. Every one of us claims us, says you are mine. This isn't idle stuff. It's personal. It's up close. You see, God's bringing, it says, a winnowing fork. You ever seen one of those in action? It's a big pitchfork. You take the grain, you throw it in the air, the grain falls down. You get to catch it. You get to catch the grain of your life that is important, the very essence of who you are. It is like going through the purifying fire, John says, so that the real gold comes to the surface. What is your gold? Do you not need it? For God's sake, I need it every day. And wonder where it is half the time. You see, this isn't idle stuff. It is to be experienced, to live it, to breathe it in, to swallow it down. God is putting his spirit and fire in you to work for him. To work for the people you love. And you know what we get to do? We get to change the world with it. Because without it, we don't change the world. We just reshuffle the world. John says, you will change the world. Man, can we take this story and turn it into a snoozer? If I could, I'd hand out steroids to everybody. (laughs) You know, I don't quote very often to you. I really don't because quotes are hard to hear. But I want to offer you one of my favorites from Teilhard de Chardin. He wrote this. We only have to go a little beyond the frontier of our sensible appearance in order to see the divine. We only have to go a little bit beyond that sensibility that we are so possessive of, so proud of, built so well, there's nothing wrong with it, to go a little beyond that and guess where we are? He says we're face to face with the divine. I am saying today is the day, today, 
maybe not next week, but today, to put down sensible stuff that holds us down, that holds us back, that is preventing you from being where you might really want to be. Because why do you come here? I don't mean I'm really serious. Ask yourself the question for a bit. You may get up and leave. I don't know. Why are you here? Why did you bother? It's rainy. It's crummy. You could be having, you know, eggs, Benedict somewhere. I could too. But you're here for a purpose. And I hope you know that I know that. I'm here for a purpose as well. I'm here to have a glimpse of God. What about you? I'm here hoping that I hear something that will sustain me this afternoon. I hope I hear something that may help you. Maybe. I don't know. Hear some words. Get an animation. Find a direction that might me help and sort. And yes, sometimes heal. That's why I bother with this. Here on Sunday, when I'm saying my prayers, when I read Scripture... Yes, I can walk through it, but most of the time, even a little bit, I have some aspiration in it. That's why you're here. I don't know if this interests you or not, but if it does a little bit, then I have an idea. And I didn't come by this idea by my own. Thankfully, Hank Bertelkamp sent me a little video, and I want you to see it. And if you've seen it, then you get to enjoy it a second time. Yeah, you heard me. That's exactly what I'm saying. I want you to have some fun this year. I want you to lighten up and take a chance or two. Or maybe you take a third chance that you've never taken. Do something that pleases you and pay attention that when it pleases you, it pleases God. Did you not know that? Take a turn at some endeavor that takes no expertise, no information, no training, no analysis. It takes passion. And go chase it. Turn loose. Turn loose of that need to control. We all have it. Be led by some joy and wonder. Let God come to you in the incredible number of ways that God will come to you this year. And look for God. Do you expect to see God every day? In fact, maybe we start making a habit that every day I wake up and the first thought, or one of the early thoughts in my morning prayers is, I wonder where God might be today. It's not he, it's not she, it's larger than that. The God of the universe is around you, is in you, Igniting passion about something you care about. Helping ignite that fire. Urging you to give and live generously without caution. So what's holding you back? One of my great mentors, early in my career, took me to lunch and told me something that has been formative for me that in exercising ministry or management or most things that we do, he said it this way, never take the plane off if you don't know where you're going to land it. And, you know, truthfully, I do live by that. He is absolutely right. It is held me, held us, held St. John's together. We're good at that. It is really important. 
But today, even for today, I want you to step away from that adage. I want you to think about your faith now. No, I want you to think about you now. You. How about this time? Right now, this year for a while, why don't we take off together and then find out where we're going to land? You know, notice that our little friend in the video did not forget his responsibilities. He just set them aside for a moment. He was walking his dog. He knew it was his responsibility. He knew. But you know, he was taking some time to explore. Really taking that time. And you know, I understand if this kind of leaves you a bit vacuous. I understand that. I'm the one on steroids, not you. I, I get it. But it's okay. Do like the ancients have taught us in our faith. Sit with it a bit. I mean, literally. Don't decide. Kind of sit with it and wait. You see, God is always nudging us. I promise. God is always nudging us. God is nudging you. I'm not kidding. All the time. In fact, sometimes I think he's pushing. God is pushing us. Maybe this year. This year. For your sake. For the sake of the gospel. For God's sake, walk in a mud puddle. Amen. Using the words of the Nicene Creed, found on page 358, let us reaffirm our faith. 